The expedition system is not coming out anytime soon, but recent leaks have been putting this upcoming system into a whole new perspective. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. The expedition system has been a hot topic lately, and with good reason. After all, a major leak went live a few days ago, revealing several screenshots from a new map being developed for the expedition system, which is currently just a prototype. Anyway, it didn't take long for the gaming media to follow up with this matter, and I decided to dig even further into the matter, such as comparing footage and revealing other aspects about what does it mean to venture forward forward to Washington DC, and what will you possibly find there around the DuPont Circle? Well, let's get into the preview with 10 things we know so far. The recent data mine leak for the expedition system suggests that Washington DC is most likely going to be the very first experience outside of Appalachia from the same Fallout universe. But before I start explaining why, you probably want to take a look at the shared screenshots, if you haven't yet. It's clearly some sort of city, featuring lots of tall buildings, roads, bridges, underway passages, and even a monorail. It's true that the environment seems quite incomplete, there's not a lot of assets yet, and there's even some sort of placeholders in the sky. From the first five screenshots though, it's pretty much impossible to pinpoint a location, but when you take a closer look at the last screenshot, things start to make a little bit more sense why Washington DC is being associated with the expedition system. If you played Fallout 3, you should recognize the asset arrangement in this screenshot. It does look like the DuPont Circle in Washington DC, doesn't it? Lots of other players seem to think the same way, judging by the amount of comments on the respective Reddit post. Anyway, I decided to compare a few screenshots from Fallout 3, to clear any doubts that Bethesda is indeed planning to lead the first expedition into DC. I first used this HD screenshot from the Fallout wiki, and I had a hard time finding any similar elements there. It didn't even look like the same place or the same monument, but that's because the angle here is very different. Sometimes it's all about the perspective, you know? So I went ahead and used another one with a more similar angle and just look at that. Now we're talking about it. In the side by side, we can clearly say this is the same place. Mm -hmm. There's just too many identical elements arranged in the same exact positions. Starting by the tall tower in the background to the monorail right below it, then we have the background building also placed in a very similar manner. Then there's the Dupont monument itself, the fountain, and we have the neg trees around it as well in both comparisons. And then in a closer angle, we also have more buildings, which don't look exactly the same, but are also placed in the same structure as in Fallout 3. Lastly, we have the underway road, which is blocked by debris in Fallout 3, but in the 76 prototype, the underway road is clear for now. Well, this is obviously the same place, there is no denying after this comparison, and that's why Washington DC is most likely going to be the location for the very first expedition. I'm saying most likely because this is just a prototype for now and a lot can change until the release date, which is unknown at the current time. Alright, so Washington DC it is, and the DuPont Circle seems to be a confirmed location for now. Besides being a monument, the DuPont Circle is also a small part of the urban area of DC, which included over a dozen of marked locations in Fallout 3. I won't say it's really large, but it's at least medium size, I would say, with plenty of things to explore, from a huge plaza to dozens of buildings and market shops. There's also a metro station near nearby, a cemetery, and lots more, as you can see. If you want to have a better idea of the entire DuPont Circle area, here's a complete map, which is probably what Bethesda is using right now as a general guide to ensure they can properly replicate this location. 
if they are indeed going forward with this concept of course and they also want to go for realistic elements now for the skeptical ones i decided to do a few more comparisons using in-game footage and i don't think there's a lot of room for doubt here the elements are all there for example this player came from the east road checked the underway passage in front of the dupont circle and then headed to the dupont monument in a quick swift as I am marking with red arrows to make it simple for you guys to follow. Everything matches with the 76 prototype, the roads, the directions, the elements and assets. So I think it's safe to say that the Dupont Circle in the DC area is the very first concept for the expedition system. Now, you must be wondering, if this is the same Dupont Circle from Fallout 3, why do things look so different when it comes to asset condition? Well, first of all, we are comparing different graphics. Secondly, the 76 screenshots are part of a prototype, which means everything there is like a sketch. It's unfinished, it's incomplete. A lot of textures and assets are still missing too, but there is another explanation which could be the main reason for all of this, actually. The two games feature very different timelines. Fallout 76 takes place in 2102, while Fallout 3 takes place in the year 2277. It's exactly 175 years apart. That's a very long time and so much can happen in almost 200 years, right? So it's no surprise that the Dupont Circle version for 76 appears to be in a much better condition, with a lot less debris, less building erosion, less visible war marks, and well, overall, less decay. In my view, that's because we are going back 175 years from the Dupont Circle in Fallout 3. It's a lot of erased history and natural decay. As such, even if the first two reasons apply, you shouldn't expect the 76 version to ever achieve the destruction levels we have seen in Fallout 3. Something I wondered while researching for this video is what to expect about an expedition in Washington DC. I didn't play Fallout 3, I won't lie to you, so I'm not very familiar with the lore. However, I think a refresher won't hurt anyone here. DC was home to many factions in Fallout 3, some of which we are very familiar with in 76, such as the Brotherhood of Steel, the Young Clave, and even Super Mutants and Raiders. There are a few new ones such as the slavers or the railroad however when it comes to the dupont point it seems like raiders were the kings of the land at the time in there together with hordes of ghouls especially in the underground metro tunnels pretty scary place to navigate anyway all this data from fallout 3 might be pretty useless to us because it tells us about the future what it will become over time but what about the past Remember the last point? The Washington version we are getting for 76 is 175 years back, so who knows what we might find there. My best guess is that ghouls will be certainly there, raiders maybe not so much yet, but the enclave and the brotherhood probably. I mean, it's the wasteland capital after all, right? Plus, the expedition system will most likely be linked with a major faction, and these two seem to be the most tech-savvy or tech-advanced in the wasteland right now. So, if we are going in a mission far, far away, there has to be a really good reason for it. And tech is usually a very persuasive one. Moving forward, the recently discovered prototypes for the expedition system is relatively new. I cannot confirm how new they are exactly, but I do remember searching for the keyword a few months ago and nothing much came up on the X-Edit program. For those who don't know what it is, it allows you to read the 76 game files, it's what data miners use pretty much. But now there are three new files, labeled as prototype, expedition, over and out. At first sign, they might look like standard names, but it's not, because if you still remember, Over and Out is the name of one of the main Brotherhood of Steel missions, which went live with the Steel Dawn DLC. In my opinion, this can only mean two things. First, this prototype name is a dummy one, like a placeholder for the real name later on, 
or it means the upcoming expeditions will be linked with the Brotherhood of Steel in some way, just like daily ops are related to the faction in a similar manner. I think it's too early to make assumptions regarding this though, so let's talk about how these new game files work like cells or instances. Yeah, even though Bethesda is making this sort of new map, it still looks like a cell with special rules in the game files, a really big cell in this case. And they are adding things like a proper sky, a day and night cycle, clouds, skylight and shadows, you know, everything to create the illusion that it's not an interior cell, when in reality it is. But don't you worry, that's normally how Bethesda operates. That's probably why they are creating separate cells too, to make sure things don't get too dense in one single file. That normally generates a lot of issues. Anyway, the upcoming expedition system won't be something small, judging by how large the prototype files are already. We are talking about almost 5,000 references or assets, as shown in the footage. Bethesda has recently started working on this new system and we already have thousands and thousands of assets there when it's only prone to grow over time. So my best guess here is that something massive will come out of this. Well, if you go back to the DuPont Circle area map, you should have an accurate idea of how large we are going for. I'm not saying they will replicate the entire area, everything you know accurately, but it should feature at least a huge part of this map. We will have plenty to explore, that's for sure. Lastly, I want to say that nothing you have seen so far is set on stone, but as the experiments a lot, and as the data miner Xera said, this prototype could end up as unused content for all we know, just like it happened with the Mole Miner City and the 76 PvP playground files. So anything could happen, don't take it as granted for now, but this is what we know. Okay, now let's move on to some actual facts. A while ago, Bethesda confirmed that they are planning to release something similar to the Fallout 4 off-map expansions. In this interview to the Rock Paper Shotgun, Jeff Gardiner, project lead for 76, confirmed a few things regarding their off-map plans. First, he said it will be a way to maybe go off the main wasteland map, and secondly, he said this will allow players to experience different areas of the Fallout universe. At the time, back in December 2020, Bethesda was still deciding about what location would they focus on for the very first expedition, which seems to be settled now to Washington DC, the DuPont Circle area to be more exact. Now, this location is obviously part of the Fallout universe from past games, so everything matches. Something else that seems to be set in stone is about players interacting with a vehicle to access the upcoming expedition system. In the same interview to the Rock Paper Shotgun, Bethesda confirmed that in order to access this new off-map area, players will need to interact with a vehicle to do so, just like it works with the Fallout 4 Far Harbor expansion. In there, players must access a certain boat's controls in order to travel to a new area of the main map. Something similar will be implemented for 76 and the expedition system, but it's still not clear what vehicle will players have to interact with. But hold on, have you seen how long it takes to travel from Appalachia to Washington DC by car? According to Google, the fastest road takes around 5 hours. 5 hours. That's quite a long journey, isn't it? So I'm not so sure Bethesda wants to use ground vehicles if the expedition is really going to take place in DC. It's just not realistic. For example, tanks are great to carry squads and equipment, but they are fairly slow, so it would take way more than just 5 hours to reach the destination. Plus, let's not even discuss about how most roads are blocked due to the end of the world scenario and how unsafe it is to cross unknown territories where raiders, cultists and other dangerous factions reside. Boats are also a possibility, they are almost everywhere in the wasteland, but from what I saw there is no direct water stream from Appalachia to DC, so we can cross this one out of the list as well. With trains and metros out of question, all we have left is pretty much air transport. 
We do have a few vertibot spots in the wasteland already, such as the pod at Watauga. So I believe this will be the transport of election for expeditions. It's rather fast, there's no risk of road blockages, and it's fairly safe too. As in, the chances for raiders or crazy cultists to attack you during your journey are not very high. But that's just my logical deduction for the time being. The following fact has been implicit in some of the previous points, but just to make things clear, the upcoming expeditions should focus on open world experiences, rather than instance short events like daily ops or a colossal problem. From the footage we saw so far, Bethesda is creating an entire new city with thousands of elements filled with roads, buildings and places to explore, so it's unlikely that they will send us there just for one single event event or one single mission. This new off-map location will basically work as an expansion of the existing world, so you should expect a little bit of everything there. New events, new missions, new NPCs, new areas to explore, maybe a new boss and even new factions too. Pretty much new endgame content, which we are in dire need right now. Lastly, the expedition system should take a while to go live, and by a while I mean at least a year. At the end of 2020 Bethesda planned to have it ready in 2021, but that didn't really go according to their plans. After all, the content roadmap for 2021 does not include expeditions in any way possible, sadly. In fact, Bethesda made it clear that expeditions are not coming in 2021, later on during their last Ask Me Anything event over Reddit. In the same statement, the 76 design director confirmed once again that expeditions will be an off-map experience and it will be its own new feature. So right now it's unknown when will this new system get released. It got pushed into 2022 and that's pretty much all we know right now. Moreover, there is something else mentioned by GamesRadar, which I think it's important to talk about. Besides no release date, we also don't know how will Bethesda release the expedition system. Will it be free? Will it be part of a new paid DLC? Will it be for Fallout First members Wally? There are plenty of models they could go for since it's a pretty big feature, and as we all know, Bethesda loves to monetize their games. Just look at the Elder Scrolls Online and you surely know what I'm talking about. It's still a long way to go until we can access the expedition system, that's for sure, but the recent reveals are certainly making things a bit more entertaining and exciting while we wait. Anyway, the first points here are not set in stone, as I said, and they could perfectly change over time. Keep in mind that all the information found in datamine unreleased files are not always accurate since Bethesda can change them or even dismiss them altogether. Plus, in this case, they seem to be working on the prototypes, so a lot more should be created in the following months. As I said before, they test a lot, they often create files which end up not being used, so there's that as well. Anyway, these are the 10 things we know about expeditions so far, and remember, Bethesda said 76 will keep getting better and better over time, so let's all hope for the best here. Now I hope I could keep you up to date with this matter, and that's it for this preview. Thank you so much for watching, I am Marta Branco, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and as usual, a huge thanks to all my dear supporters, you guys are the best. I will see you all very very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!